Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Hopefully you guys are all having a wonderful day. Today's upload is going to be another exciting video. It is going to be a episode on or a video on when to expect your first frost 2018. A um, couple of disclaimers to make is that this forecast by no means is 100% accurate. Um, don't make your plans or anything based off this forecast because this forecast is merely a prediction. It's a forecast, so that means if it's a forecast that's not going to be 100% right, it's basically an educated guess. I could also call it that way. And I think it's a fairly educated well guess, or fairly well educated guess, but not 100% accurate. So, before we also get into this video, consider subscribing to my channel, consider liking the video. You may be wondering, why am I telling you guys to do these things <clears throat> before even starting the video, or before you have even watched the video? Well, you could just keep this in the back of your mind. Um, if you have been watching my channel for quite a bit, you could consider subscribing, dropping a like. That will really help out a lot. Also, if you're new to this channel and this is the first time watching your video, or a video on my channel, um, check out my channel, feel free to check it out. My other videos about weather, um, there's quite a bit of them, so you could check those out. And then you could consider subscribing whether you like my channel or whether it suits your needs. So, let's, without further ado, let's move on into the video. So, today we'll be looking at five factors. I'll try making this video a bit quicker than last time's video, because last time video was pushing my limit in terms of a little bit too long. So the outlook, or sorry, the first factor will be ENSO. Uh, Remember, always I used to say ENCO until someone corrected me. It's ENSO or ENZO. I think I'll just call it ENZO. So ENZO outlook, um, average first frost map is the second factor. Um, the third factor is analogs. The fourth factor is season NOAA seasonal outlooks, and the fifth factor is my fall temperature outlook, which I've created a couple of weeks earlier. So without further ado, let's get into the um, first factor. So the first factor we'll be looking at is average date of first freeze map or first freeze, first frost, basically the same thing. And if we look at this, you can see there's a lot of um, real estate that is mainly in October. And generally, most of the United States is anywhere from October 1st through October 30th. There are some places where it's in September, like um, the Rockies, way up far in the <clears throat> upper plains in the arrowhead of Minnesota, and parts of um, the north woods in Wisconsin, also parts of the, these big forests in upper Michigan, which, which um, always preserve a little bit extra cold since they are just such expensive lands of forest, and they don't really have, they're not you can see also that right by the coastline, there isn't much of a September 15th dateline first frost. First frost due to the fact that the lakes are usually warmer at this time and they could still create a breeze that is warming the land around it. But however, central Michigan is like this cool spot where um, the colder air could settle in. Also, some parts of upstate um, New England could also see some in September 15th. But you could see overall pick your um, place, and that's your average first freeze. And this year, what I think will occur is that mainly the frost fr frost dates may be a little bit earlier in the south, but in the northwest, they may be a little bit later, and then everywhere else, they should be just around average. Um First off, though, before we get into my final outlook, which will be in a couple of minutes, I want to talk about the EN or ENSO neutral is or the ENSO outlook, and the ENSO neutral is favored through July September 2018, with an El Nino favored thereafter. Chances for El Nino are near 70% during Northern Hemisphere winter 2018-2019, and you could see that. For the fall months, which we're concerned about since frost happens during the fall, what we're looking at here is September, October, November, October, November, December, 60 to 70% chance of an El Nino. You may be wondering, well, what on earth does an El Nino mean for my location? Well, a typical El Nino pattern looks something like this. <clears throat> um, warm and dry across the north and wetter and cooler across the south. So that would make sense that with an El Nino pattern, we could expect some earlier frost dates across the north or later frost dates across the north and some um, earlier frost dates across the south. But um, not all El Ninos are the same. And the reason why I say this is looking at these two things. So usually 
an El Nino, which is eastern-based El Nino. That's what it's called. Typically looks like this, and this is pictured on the left here. However, this year, um, maybe an El Nino Modokai forming, and I'll show you in a minute why I think so. But you can see the temperatures in the waters are quite a big difference. Here there's blue, so it's cooler right out the coast, warmer in the center, and then cooler by Oce Oceania and the Papua New Guinea East Asia area. And um, this is obviously called a central-based El Nino since most of the waters that are warmer are in the center. So we look at the sea surface temperatures during an El Nino Modokai and compare them to now. It obviously looks more like a El Nino Modokai as of now than rather than an El Nino that's eastern base. And again, this is so far out. I know this could the current sea surface temperatures could change so much, but I am just saying that there are other couple of indicators that are showing that an El Nino model can be forming. We need to keep an eye on it, eye on for it. So that is definitely a factor that could play in. And if you're wondering what, what also resembles an El Nino, El Nino Modokai, south of Greenland right now we have cooler waters, El Nino Modokai, cooler waters. Right off the east coast, warmer waters, during an El Nino Modokai, warmer waters. So again, you can see this, there's a couple of things that are um, currently in favor with the El Nino Modokai forming this year. But again, this is so far out that my forecast is just mainly based off an El Nino, it's a little bit mixed with an El Nino Modokai, if it does occur. And so now you may be wondering, what does an El Nino Modokai mean versus an El Nino? Well, we just got to look at the anomaly. So there isn't nothing really that is just an El Nino Modokai pattern like there is for an El Nino. Um, so all I did was took a bunch of El Nino Modokai years, like 1986, 2002, 1991. All these years were El Nino Modokais. I compiled them together, and this is what it comes out to during the fall months, which obviously where frost occurs. I should have included September here, but I didn't, and I, um, that would be a mistake. But again, that wouldn't change it much because, in general, you can see the pattern is... Whether it's an El Nino Modokai or an El Nino, in this case, and for this video, it doesn't play much of a role. It does seem that much of the United States will be above average in terms of this fall. I think this fall will be warmer for much of the United States. And um, you can see that with an El Nino Modokai, there may be some, you know, maybe cooler around the southeast and east coast, but... Um, it's not nearly as big as a difference as it would be between an El Nino or, say, even a La Nina. An El Nino and a La Nina. You can see El Nino, El Nino Modokai, very similar. Um, southeast, it's basically focused on the south and the southeast during an El Nino Modokai, and then during an El Nino, it's just the south and southwest. So, some subtle differences that could end up making a difference, but not too major. The next factor I want to look at is the U.S. rainfall anomalies during an El Nino Modokai year. So this is obviously um, assuming that if an El Nino Modoka year happens, this is what we typically expect. And as you can see by this map, it is wetter than normal for much of the eastern half of the country and drier than normal for much of the western part of the country. So um, this doesn't really play much role in the frost. However, sometimes when a um, when it is wetter, then that frost may happen easier because there's just more condensation in the air. So that could play a role, but I just wanted to include this just to give you a little background on what an El Nino Modoka can do do. Um, now let's look at a different factor, which was my t my fall temperature outlook. And what I mean by this map right here, you can see coldest fall and warmest fall. I don't mean necessarily that in the blue there will be a cold fall. What I mean is that they have the highest chances of seeing a coldest fall compared to the rest of the country. So when you were in the blue, I do think that they could have a colder than average fall, but I doubt it. Um, if I were to make this, I made this forecast a couple weeks ago. If I were to make this now, I would adjust the warmer to for much more of the country and I would ex decrease this blue to around the um, southern Indiana, northwestern Ohio, somewhere, else, I should put on my pointer, somewhere along this line I would extend the blue, but not much further. I think this is a bit exaggerated, but again, um, things will c constantly be changing and um, that's how that's how weather works. So um, the, the last factor we'll be looking at, I think this is the last factor we'll be looking at, is the NOAA seasonal outlook. And NOAA seasonal outlook is basically just something NOAA puts out 
and what they think the temperatures will be for that given time and the precip um, anomalies will be for that given time. So right here we have September, October, November, and you can see again, I would kind of agree with this, but I, I think Noah's a little a bit doing it a little bit too aggressive in terms of the warm side. I would extend the equal chances a little bit farther to the northwest, but that is Noah. Um, um, that is their choice. But again, I do agree that much of the country will be above average, and I do fairly agree with the precip. I don't know if I would make this so much above average here in the south Southwest, I'd probably decrease it and possibly increase it into the mid-Atlantic region and parts of the South Central U.S. I would, though, definitely keep this here in the the below average in the Northwest because I do think that will happen. And now um, we move on to a different time period, which is October, November, December 2018. You can see they extended the equal chances for um, for about you know equal chances for below or above average temperatures but I probably would extend this even further where you see this lighter shade of color right in here I would probably extend that to white um, maybe even blue a little bit blue down here so that is a chance for a cooler fall so you can see Noah um, d definitely is has a fairly good idea on it but I think they're a little bit over exaggerating it on the warm side but here when it comes to the precip I don't really agree with this because if you were to look at a typical El Nino pattern they basically just slapped it right on this map without putting any focus into it so I do think that it will be above average in the south but I exactly that it will extend out into Nebraska and then dip down into the um, Alabama and Georgia and Mississippi and I really doubt this. I think it'll be more of a um, pattern where it's above average where I'm marking this out right here and maybe slightly above average in the southwest but definitely not all of this. I think that is not necessarily going to come true but again um, it's far out. We don't know. Maybe Noah has a better better handle on this. I'm not sure. So now um, my final who will when to expect your first frost this year. Drum roll please. And this is what I think will look like, what it'll look like this year. So, pardon me for the bad map. Um, I did my best, so, yeah, pardon me for that. But it's not the quality of the map, it's the quality of the forecast. So, let's dive right into this. So, anywhere you see the pink colors, which hopefully I did a little bit too um, vigorous on the pink in terms of the color intensity. You could barely see the outlines, but here's Idaho, here's Montana, here's parts of Wyoming, and here's Washington State. You can see that I think those areas will be um, can receive their frost present through September 15th. I know I got a comment someone saying that right outside Colorado they already had their first <clears throat> um, frost so I definitely included that area in. And I'm sorry about the mountain ranges guys. I know that there's probably some locations in um, Washington and Nevada that, are, that have already seen the frost and will see in the next couple of weeks. But I just couldn't I, I just didn't want to pinpoint all those mountains. It'll be just way too tedious. So if you know where you are in the mountains and you know if you receive a frost this early on, then you probably will receive it this early on, as you typically do this year. Uh, maybe in the northwest a little bit delayed, but not by much. And the main difference that I did was I decreased this September 15th through October 1st time frame up to the north because I think the northern part of the country this year may be a little bit warmer. And I just increased the October 15th through November 1st chances all the way down to parts of mid, mid to central parts of um, Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi due to the fact that the southeast may be a little bit below average as marked by NOAA and my couple of other previous factors I showed you. And then December 1st through January or if they're going to see a frost at all is basically the, the pink or the light purple areas and in the white is basically we don't know if they're going to even see a frost. So that is it basically for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing subscribing to my channel. Please consider liking the video. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next episode.